about his mother. And if anybody else has something to say, um, just come up to the front in the middle. You don't have to stand behind here. But just come in the middle and uh, just say what Edie has done in your life. And, and, and the family wants to hear it. The family wants to hear it because they just love hearing the stories from her. And I think, you know, the story of the blouse really cracked me up. But the story of how she took care of her family was my favorite. So, Rodney. Edie Tossett Kramer Gaines, born Edith Viola Chamberlain. I knew her as mom. My first memory of her was the only time she ever stuck me with diaper pill. Now I know this because eventually she admitted it. Um, she said I had this strange look on her face and then I started to bawl. Of course in my mind it was like I didn't know what the sensation was and then this thing that I was in started screaming. But, uh, Mom was a very active mom growing up. Um, she was very involved with her school. You can probably school. And back then, it was just a small town school. Um, when I started kindergarten, kindergarten through 12th grade was on one campus. Just one block east of 61st Domingo. Of course, today it's like the fourth largest in Oklahoma. And she was also, you know, she'd be our home. Her home mother, she would bake cookies and stuff for all the parties and things, like Christmas, Valentine's, and so forth. She was very active. Uh, oh, she loved to sew. <laughs> when, when Tosca and I were young, she really sewed a lot. Of course, she didn't sew as much as when Bobby and uh, Ronnie was, uh, when they were around, when my, when my sister and I. She made me a pair of pants made from a print that had nothing but peanuts on it. And, you know, and, of course, I proudly told everybody, my mother made these, you know. Um, and she was very active in, you know, scouting. Like, Bobby and Ronnie, she was her deadly. In fact, you actually saw a picture of her when she was behind the booth. That was a fairground. And with Tosca, she was the bluebird leader. But when I was out there, remember, this was a, a town called Union. It had it was just barely been annexed in Tulsa. They didn't have a troop for me, so I ended up being like an honorary blue jay in there. <laughs> and uh, she was uh, readily liked by most people, and most would call her sweet. She saw the world through rose-colored glasses. No matter how it was, it just seemed better than it really was how she looked upon the world. And uh, if you would ask her how our life was growing up, she'd say, well, the father knows best, or leave it to Beaver. When in reality, it was the cross between the Simpsons and the monsters. <laughs> she would even say the same thing about her family growing up. You know. But most would have claimed it was more like a mommy dearest family with a grandmother for spite which her sister Betty has told me before. She would see the grass was greener on this side, and it was because she made it this way. She loved her garden. She could be she could be seen out in the garden from spring until fall. She just loved it. And one of her favorite flowers is known as the spider lily. It's also known as the naked lady because in the fall, it has no leaves. She was waiting for them to come up this year. She was in the hospital. And they came up with abundance this year, too. But I'm not really going to see the, Easter, I mean the, uh, the spider lily or the naked lady the same way again. Because from this day forward, when I see them come up this fall, <coughs> the next fall, they'll remind me of her. Anybody else?
else want to share a story, Tony? I will. Okay. Well, we'll get Zachary will wait after you and go last. I first knew Edie's mother before I knew Edie. <coughs> she was my violin teacher and the concert master of the symphony. And she said, Edie's going to be in high school. And freshmen do get lost in Great Lake High School. So one day when I was late getting out to lunch because I had to stop and get my bow repaired, I saw Edie and her friend, and my friend had already, other friend had already gone to lunch. So I asked Edie if I could join her. And she said yes. And from that day on, we were close friends. Uh, Edie was a very special she had a very quiet way about her, and I always felt the peacefulness around her was absolutely genuine, and she accepted everything as it came. It was very beautiful. You don't see that often in people. She didn't worry about things too much that I could tell, or if she did, she was quiet about it. But that quiet quality of hers was so contagious, and when she married James, by the way, I knew him first. Oh, you knew him first. Yeah. I knew him first. <laughs> <laughs> I knew him in grade school. <laughs> I was a little jealous of one of his pictures that he painted once. We both liked to do art. And uh, he was pretty good. He was pretty good. And I was just a little bit jealous. When we were in high school, he played cello. And, and uh, Edie played violin in the orchestra. And... Uh, I understand after they were married, they would go over to TU and play in the TU orchestra together as an outside way to enjoy music again. And uh, I uh, was so fond of Edie, I just sort of became a second-hand member of the family and became fond of her brother and sister as well. And um, it was a tremendous experience. I saw her mother as bigger than life. Uh, I know she can be a little snippy at one time. <laughs> she did thump me on the head once when I hit a wrong note. <laughs> 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 but I just liked it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it was just such a pleasure growing old with Edie. She moved about a mile from my house. We both bought new houses when this, this area was new. And her house was only about a mile from mine. So we continued our friendship in full blast, and uh, I was always there for her. She always knew if anything happened, she could always call me, and uh, I was there when her father died. I went to that funeral. I was there when her mother died. I went to that funeral. I was there when her husband died. I went to that funeral, and now I'm here. I'll never forget her. She was very precious.
a great deal. And so are the grandkids. I know she loved her, every one of you. And uh, that's really all I have to say. <laughs> but she was a fine lady. She was a fine mother. She's well, that's all.